Surah 1, when you speak to me, you must come from the heart. As you speak from your heart all your desires will be generated to create as I have created. As you speak from your heart all your desires will be generated to create as I have created. Surah 2, sounds and different tones also create things. Surah 3, you do not have to sing to me, but if you wish to sing to the world, then sing to the world, for it is my creation. Surah 4, for those that wish to exalt me, I say this, drink the juice of the grape and the cherry and do it in harmony and kinship, and I will bless you 100 fold. Surah 5, whatever you do in my name and for me, I will bless you 100 fold. If you do for yourself, you do for me. Surah 6, go into all the earth and spread the truth for which I have told you. Force upon no one my teachings, but help everyone in need. Be kind and positive, and there will be those who will ask after your ways. There is more to this book not added here. Book 4 is not available for public viewing. Book 5, Surah 1, In the beginning of the earth, there were no humans upon the land, for the animal people ruled the earth. Surah 2, There was a planet called Aden by which the Amorians and the Lemurians were in power. The Lutets and Uliaks went to war against the Amorians and the Lemurians, and their weapons were as powerful as the sun, and they destroyed their planet and had to flee in great airships. Surah 3, Only 3,000 of the people of Aden made the journey to Earth. They orbited about the Earth for many seasons as the Earth was not yet ready for man to set foot upon. Surah 4, The chief of the human people was called Yohod, who was a Lemurian. He selected Obom an Amorian who was very wise, to go upon the face of the earth in a beautiful garden with plenty to eat, and prepare the way for the rest of the humans. Surah 5, Yohod took Obom to the earth from the great sphere that served as their sky home for many seasons, and explored a certain fungi which if ate, he would die. Surah 6, after Obom had lived upon the face of the earth for some time, he became lonely and called upon Yohod to send him a woman. Yohod then sent over, another Amorian to stay with Obom. Surah 7, Obom and Ova stayed upon the face of the earth for many seasons preparing for the others to live upon the earth. Surah 8, Lushur, the second in command of the skyship told Yohod they did not wish to remain in the skyship any longer, and wanted to go to the earth to live. Yohod told him the time was not yet right. Surah 9, Lushur gathered together as many as would follow him and arose against Yohod and his people while they slept. Yohod awoke and there was a great battle, in which Yohod overcame the enemy. Yohod placed Lushur and his followers in a smaller skyship that looked like a large serpent and sent them into outer darkness. Surah 10, Lushur turned the skyship around toward the earth with the help of his followers and landed it upon the earth near where Obom and Ova were living. Surah 11, one day as Ova was alone gathering fruit, Lushur approached her and told her that Yohod had sent him there to watch over her and Obom. He told her also that if she ate the fungi that Yohod told them not to eat, that she wouldn't die, but would become enlightened and know as much as the creator of the earth. Ova then took of the fungi and ate it and her eyes were opened. She saw one that she had never seen with her eyes opened. She then went to Obom and gave him some of the fungi also, and he too became enlightened and he beheld great wonders. Surah 12, Yohod came upon them as they had eaten the forbidden food, and admonished them for disobeying him, and taking orders from others without his knowledge. He sent them away and told them he did not want to see them ever again. Surah 13, he again captured Lushur and his followers and sent them again to the outer darkness of the sky. Surah 14, Thereafter, Yohod took his people upon the earth and built caves beneath the surface of the earth with a great light which could cut through solid rock. There he built cities for his people and they lived underground, as the earth above was not quite ready yet. Surah 15, Yohod and his people lived underground for many seasons building large cities and gardens. Surah 16, one day after a great length of time had passed, a woman of the name Law Surah, emerged above the ground and come upon the descendants of Obom and Ova, whom had begat sons, Canaan and Obal and their children. These descendants had flourished upon the face of the earth in great numbers and had built large cities. Law Surah went down beneath the earth and gathered followers who went with her atop the ground to join Obom and Ova's descendants. There they too built villages and cities. Some of the people of Lemuria who had come to the surface with Law Surah went west toward the sea. Surah 17, Tomahola, the leader of the Lemurians instructed the Lemurians to build ships when they came upon the seashore. 
Surat 18, the Lemurians built many large ships and set sail across the sea. Surah 19, the Lemurians went across the sea and landed upon the shores of a great land where they built villages. Surah 20, the Lemurians who had come upon this great land called it Lemuria after their people and built a large empire upon the new land. Surah 21, the Lemurians named their capital city to Hoblomoma, meaning peaceful home. The city flourished and grew large. Surah 22, the descendants of Yohod also emerged atop the ground and went into the lands of the south and north to build cities. Surah 23, after Yohod had stayed under the ground for a little season, he went atop of the ground and with a few faithful, entered the sky ship and went into the sky and beyond the sun to a new planet which they named Adonola meaning New Aden. Surah 24, Yohod and his followers went upon the new planet and built a city in which to live. Surah 25, the descendants of Yohod on earth which had left the underground cities, also went to the seashore of the west and built ships and sailed across the sea. They stopped upon islands and a few in number settled upon some of the islands. The larger body of the people sailed onto a large land mass in going upon the shores, built villages. Surah 26, from the underground cities from which the descendants of Yohod had emerged, the people went into all parts of the earth and settled. Surah 27, from the underground cities went the Amorians to the north and the south, the Lemurians to the east, the Letis to the northeast, the Jahaks to the northwest, the Maliks to the southeast, the Haranks to the southwest, the Jaraz sailed upon the sea to the lands across the sea of the northeast, the Rockers to the inner seas across the great seas to the northeast. Surah 28, after many seasons, the earth was settled by all races of man, the Jaraz traveled south to Lemuria and spoke to the Lemurians, saying they had come in peace. When the Lemurians were unprepared, the Jaraz rose up against them, killed many Lemurians, plundered their cities for treasures, and drove the Lemurians deep into the forest. Surah 29, the city of Dehoblomoma was destroyed by the Jaraz. Surah 30, the Jaraz rebuilt the city for themselves and flourished strong, using captive Lemurians as slaves. Surah 31, after a great season, a mighty earthquake destroyed the city of Dehoblomoma and all its inhabitants, and sunk it to the depths of the sea, and causing an island to appear to the east of the great land mass. Surah 32, the Lemurians that had fled into the forest journeyed north and built an even larger city in the east central of Lemuria, which they called Tomomba. Surah 33, in the center of the city they built a temple and a palace for their king. The city was warred against invaders. Surah 34, within a short season, Tomomba had 200,000 persons living in their city. The city was surrounded by a large army which guarded their city against invaders. Surah 35, a little north of the underground cities, the Amorians also built large cities with thousands of people living in them. Surah 36, from the Amorians sprang the Yuli, the Malatek, the Yuvatek, the Mexatek, the Yalatek and the Yulatek. From the Lemurians sprang the Luikla, the Ungbongo, the Ethiopian, the Tomboom and the Tibersuane. From the Jakaks sprang the Niporians and the Yatangites. From the Maliks sprang the Osrites, the Bohoyas, the Havanias, the Humakes and the Rockites. From the latter sprang the Aramaics, the Ibis, the Galaks and the Sophians. Surah 37, these things many have forgotten, for it was long ago when the earth was new that these things happened. Surah 38, after many seasons, when all the nations prospered and were strong, many nations again made iron machines, some to destroy their enemies with. The Gallics invaded the Scarfians, and much of the people in both nations were slain, their cities lay in ruin. Both nations fled to the countryside and lived in tents. Surah 39, the tribes of the Amorians fought amongst themselves and warred upon the cities. The cities fell, and the tribes moved further north. Surah 40, some of the smaller tribes went far to the northern seashores and built villages and lived in peace. Surah 41, there lived amongst one of these tribes, the Malikas, an old wise man with the name Hokanshi, who went into the mountains to meditate. While Hokanshi meditated, the mountains shook and out of the top on one great mountain fire spewed forth and the sky darkened at midday. Hokanshi became afraid and started down the mountains, but was surrounded by burning rocks and fire. Hokanshi called out to the Creator in a loud voice and a divine spirit, Gambaral, appeared upon a tall rock and told Hokanshi to follow him. 
Gambrel showed Ho Kanshi a safe path down from the mountains. When Ho Kanshi had reached the valley below in safety, Gambrel's spirit materialized and turned into a large rock. Thereafter the rock became a sacred place to the Malacca tribe and a village was built near the spot. Surah 42, there were some tribes who went east in the big land of the north, and they built large cities near rivers and lakes. One of these cities, which was built where two mighty rivers met, was called Delalata, which became the capital city of the Mahanaks. This great city flourished for a long time and then fell by invaders further to the east. Another city was later built upon the site of the old city which became greater than the first city. Surah 43, the Eulis built cities high in the mountain tops near the old underground cities, to fortify against invaders. The Yuli nation grew strong and people were happy. They grew food on the hillside below the city. Each garden was like a giant step, one below the other. The Yuli stayed here for hundreds of seasons and were not warred on by any of the tribes living in the villages below. The Yuli carried on trade with other tribes and were at peace with all nations. The Yulis had little wants. No one went hungry. They were a good people. Surah 44, Aradia was pleased with the Yulis and poured blessings down upon them. Surah 45, there was a large island nation off the southeast coast of the Amorian mainland which was called Atlantis. The Atlanteans were a very advanced people with flying machines and war machines that could slay large numbers of people. Korshai was the empire of all Atlantis. Korshai was a cruel and powerful leader who enslaved both his own people and his enemies. All those who opposed him were slain or made slaves to build his empire. Atlantis invaded weaker nations and took their people slaves. The Atlanteans warred on the trading ships between the Lemurians and the Eulatec. The Eulatec went unto their powerful allies, the Eubatec to help them. The Eubatec invaded Atlantis and a mighty battle raged. The Atlanteans retreated and fled to the inner parts of their nation. The Eubatec withdrew. The Atlanteans were careful thereafter whom they attacked. A mighty earthquake hit the Atlantean nation shortly thereafter and it sunk into the sea within a short time, leaving only a small chain of islands. The Atlanteans who survived took sail to the mainland of Amoria and went amongst the Chokons of Amoria and stayed on with these people, intermarrying amongst them, thus the Atlantean race died out. Surah 46, in the middle of the great Atlantean sea there stood a nation called Mu, which has kind and bountiful people living on it. They helped many seafaring ships in trouble. They had plenty to eat and were a happy people, very religious, who worshipped Haradia and helped all who were in need of help. They had a large city built by the sea which they called Mohoa, numbering 500,000 persons. The city of Mohoa was of white stone and the walls of the buildings were adorned with seashells of every color. The women wore brightly colored jewels upon their bodies and the finest silk garments. The Mutes were a very advanced people in medicine and had conquered all diseases of the body. Nations everywhere traded with them and took back to their countries medicines to heal their sick. Mu flourished strong for many seasons. A mountain that stood near the great city of Mohoa shook one day and spewed out fire and melting rock, pouring its melting rock in rivers down upon the great city Mohoa. The people of Mu built ships quickly and fled the island toward Moria. The mountain rumbled even more and blew completely apart destroying the whole of the island and all but a handful of the remaining people of Mu. All that remained of the island was a very small bit, and the opened volcano, which was filled with seawater. The city of Mohoa completely disappeared beneath the rocks of the mountain and the bottom of the sea. The Mutes that reached Amoria traveled far to the northeast of that land built villages and became like the Amorians, taking up their ways. Surah 47 in the far south of the Great Sea of Atlantis there was another island nation called Og. The Ogots were descendants of Yohod's people long ago. The Ogots were a peaceful people who carried on trade with neighboring islands and hardly ever ventured far from their home, but one amongst them, who is called Tomaka, built a great ship and with a few friends set sail to explore the rest of the world. Tomaka sailed south and discovered a great landmass of crude people living on it. Tomaka went inland of this great land and discovered many volcanoes, some very strange looking animals that were thought to be extinct, and pools of hot mineral water everywhere. There were trees and plant life like none other found anywhere upon the face of the earth. Tomaka and his men also found a cave that went down under the ground, and they went down into it and found gold in great abundance deep within the cave. They explored miles of this underground cave and found bits of pottery, stone tools and more gold. 
Tomaka and his men went back atop the ground and went back to their ship and sailed west. After traveling westward for some time, they came upon another great landmass, and set foot upon it and explored it. They came upon another tribe of people who dressed in very colorful garments and who were always singing and dancing. Tomaka and his men stayed with these people for many seasons, exploring their land and learning their customs. Tomaka learned that these people called themselves Muaris and that long ago they had come here from a great land to the east. They said they had been visited by visitors from the sky who had come there in great ships that looked like birds. They said the sky visitors were clothed in silver garments and had strange sticks that were silver and shot out a light that could melt rocks. Tomaka told them the story of his ancestor, Yohod, and of his coming to earth. The Muaris were happy with this tale, and tried to get Tomaka and his men to stay on with them and never leave but Tomaka told them that he must leave. Shortly thereafter, Tomaka and his men once again set sail and traveled north and then west and came upon a large group of islands inhabited by a race of people with olive color skin and slitted eyes. These people also wore colorful costumes and were into arts and music and had fine cities. Tomaka stayed with these people for a long time, learning their customs and ways before sailing again, this time south. Again he came upon a large group of islands, inhabited by a very unfriendly dark race. Some of these darker people slayed some of Tomaka's men so they fled southeastward. After being at sea for some time they landed on the coast of Lemuria. There they stayed for many seasons, Tomaka dying of old age, never knowing he had nearly traveled around the world, or that he and his men were the first to have ever done so. Sura 48, when Tomaka or his men never returned, the Ogots became afraid and never ventured away from their island very far. Sura 49, a great storm came upon the sea, mightier than any storm had ever come, and fell upon all Og. The people of Og were all destroyed, with only one survivor, an old woman who had hidden in a small cave. After the storm was over, and the island nation lay in total ruin, she took to a small boat and drifted to the mainland to the west and there told the people she came upon what happened. The people were kind to her and took her in and even exalted her, as they felt she had been saved because she was some kind of holy person. She stayed on with these people for many years before dying there. These people sent a few of their people back to Og aboard small boats to bury the dead. They buried the dead and cleaned up the ruined nation, but none stayed as they called it the Island of the Dead and left. Sura 50, no one ever again lived on the island of Og, for they were considered cursed. Sura 51, there will come a time when the Amorian nation will fall by invaders from across the great Atlantis Sea. These invaders will war strong and will become an advanced nation with powerful weapons of war and they will divide the races and start a new race of men. But after many seasons they will fall by their own hand. Beasts will rule this nation. This new nation will be named after Alati. They will war on all the Amorians and say they do it in my name. But I say this to you, I will turn my face from them and change the land they dwell upon. The Hittan people will rise up in their ranks and many people of this nation will turn from it and go into the north of this nation and build a great city. Many Amorians will join the ranks of the Hittans and go to live in the new city. This city will be built high in the mountains and the way to it will be by a rough road. They will name their city sea and believe, but not by that nation's tongue. There shall be no want in their city, and they shall live in splendor and have plenty to eat. But because the end of that nation shall be near, they will also build another city inside of the mountains that will be much like the city under the ground that Yohad built, and those living in this city will be there for many seasons, as the top of the ground will become unfit to live upon. All of those that remain upon the top of the ground will perish by fire. Sura 52 this great city above the ground will all be built in one building, larger than a palace. There will be gardens of fruit, vegetables and nuts. There shall be pools of water for bathing and fish. There will be waterfalls, pathways, trees and flowers. There will be one season there and everyone will be happy and live in harmony. At one end of this city will be the palace of the Proctor, who will live in finery and who will be linked to the outside world. The city will be made of stone and wood and look out to a valley far below it. The rest of this nation will despise the Hittan people and will bring troubles upon their people, but even more people will join their ranks. Surah 53, there will be a time when the Hittan people will become the most powerful people upon the face of the earth and many nations and people will fear them and show great respect in their presence. Whole nations will become Hittan. 
Many Hittans will not be good people, but those that will be, will be powerful and wealthy. The Hittans will own vast land holdings in many cities and villages. Surah 54, a time will come when many Hittan leaders will revoke me and spit upon my people and who shall be cast from my presence. These will be chaotic times. Many will join the ranks of the Hittans and then be cast out from them, but the religion will wax strong and rise up strong against their enemies. Surah 55, at this time there will be a great religion that many of the foolish shall believe in and say that it is the true religion and that they follow after me. But I say this to you, it shall be a negative religion that speaks untruths and practices negative works against my creation, and I will bring my wrath down upon all those that follow this religion, for it is the religion of the terrible beast. All will know them, as some will wear black garments and chant in Latin, Latin. Some will despise part of my creation and love the rest. I say this to them, ye cannot love part of my creation and hate the rest any more than ye can love part of me and hate the rest of me. For I am all that there is, and all that there is, is me. Ye must love all of me and my creation, or I will turn myself from thee and bring my wrath down upon thee. Surah 56, He who hates any of my creation, hates me also. Surah 57, He that hates me, I will turn my face from them. Surah 58, But he that loves me, I will bless them. Surah 59, Be ye forewarned, the time shall come when I will destroy what I made if man continues to make my creation imperfect. Surah 60, watch for this time.